Oh, you ordered what? Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the Dean Callen Show. Today, we're going to celebrate. We're going to celebrate the very last episode of Cabin Fever. Now, I'm not going to stop making a show, but I'm not going to make Cabin Fever, right? Um, partly because the pubs have already closed, like things have closed, right? Um, I mean, opened. <laughs> so here in the UK, I don't know about where you are. Um, some people are going back into a second lockdown, but effectively like bars have started to close. Uh, sorry, open. Ugh, not closed. Bars have started to open again. So bartenders are going back to work. And the cabin fever thing, you know, I, early on in the piece, um, if you ever, if you watch the show right at the beginning, there was a picture of me with like a tin hat, like going cr stir crazy saying like cabin fever. And I got rid of that because I thought to myself, what if this thing goes on for a really long time, right? And, and I'm constantly talking about um, lockdown and all the horrible shit that's going on with lockdown. And I thought, the show needs to be positive, right? The show, like, if I do a show to distract people, and you know what? I'm not going to lie. This show, doing this show has made me feel like I'm doing something. Whether or not I'm achieving something or not, I don't know. Um, maybe one day I'll be able to turn it into, like, a proper show where it's it somehow makes some ad revenue or something. I don't know. And that's all I do, but I'm still able to put food on the table. That'd be great. Um, but I really, really enjoy doing it. And I enjoy doing it because I get to vent a little bit of uh, creativity. Um, I get to uh, keep myself active. I'm doing something. But mostly because there's a community, right? Now, uh, hey, guys. <laughs> you might have seen um, in the past I've reached out to people and asked them to help me with stuff, right? Now, at the moment, we've got this running thing every fortnight where I'm sending out samples of really amazing whiskey to people. They're tasting it and they're making cocktails. So last time we had um, the legend that is Hannah Lamphere, we had uh, Joe Wadsack and we had Hadrian all make cocktails. And I have to say, Hadrian's home bar was epic, right? So Hadrian, politely last episode when I said, hey, who wants to get involved, uh, said he would. So he's in, right? Straight off the bat, he's going to be doing another cocktail. Joe said he would, so I'll double check with Joe. Um, but yeah, Joe's in. And this time, um, we've got Dominic Wisson, Dominic Aiden Wisson. So if you know Dominic, uh, Dominic was one of the uh, kind of key bartenders, I guess a bartender at the American Bar at the Savoy. You know, this guy worked on a team when they, they, they won uh, best bar team in the world, I think, or best bar in the world or whatever. They won a bunch of awards, or at least an award, something quite spectacular, if I do recall. Pretty sure they won bar team. I don't know. They won something, right? And he, wa he worked under Declan McGurk and Eric Lorin. So, like, if, if, if someone's going to help contribute to the show, um, people like Hannah Lamphere, people like Dominic Wisson, they're people that I would want to listen to if I was watching the show, and obviously Joe and Hadrian as well. But I mean, like, there are people, who, I've sat in front of Dominic's bar at, when he was at the Savoy and just dreamt about what it would be like to actually work there, right? So working with him on the show is pretty epic, right? And the funny thing is, I was just chatting to him about different projects we were doing and asked him if he wanted to do it because he's actually never watched a single episode of the show. Right, now, that led me to thinking, what is there... What are we lacking from the show that would interest me if I wanted to watch the show? Now, obviously, I don't want to tune in to someone who's just ranting and talking shit. And I've noticed, you know, there's a lot of thought that needs to go into content. And as much as I like to just kind of blabble, if I just make the drinks I like the taste of, we're not going to get very far. So... I'm, I've said this a couple of times, but as of, as of the next episode, okay, I am going to try to put together, hey, hi, Diogo, how are you? Um, I am going to try to put together um, a set of recipes, right? So first of all, I would like to hear people's opinions on stuff. 
Like if I if I could have four different segments or four different people pushing segments, you know, Mitch's minute, amazing, right? Like my dream would be to get Dale DeGroff to like get like have Mitch's minute, but then have like oh, kind of would you call it the the celebrities like take on celebrity slice, like like a bar like someone from the bar industry who's just a genuine legend, like answering questions um, from anyone. Could be from you guys, could be from me. Just like coming back to us being like, yeah, you know, I, well, I wouldn't do that. I'd think this, right? I'd like to see that. I'd like to, I'd like to be given some insight into books. So for example, um, it's, it's, it's really funny because a couple of different people have actually said they'd like to see a book club start on the show. Now, you can't see it, and I don't really have a camera that I could move around, but there's probably 400, maybe 450, 500 odd books in, in the cabin itself, and then I've got loads of other books in storage, and they're all cocktail books. And I mean, if a new book comes out, I, don't, I can't see where I put it, but if a new book comes out, I basically pre-order it by, right away, even if I don't have time to read it. Um, especially if I know the author. So Ivy Mix's book, I, I think I literally got it today. I don't know where I put it. Where did I put it? Well, Ivy's book, wait, I think I see it. You can still hear me. You can't see me. There we go. Right? So Ivy's book came in today. I haven't even opened the thing yet. Um, we're quite delayed. But like... I mean, I didn't know this was coming out until I seen Jack McGarry said it was good. So I seen it and then went to order it, went to pre-order it. And uh, I had to wait for it to come out in the UK. But uh, man, like it looks awesome. So one of the things I'd love to see is if someone's gone through a book, loves the book. Like if I was able to read, read through the book, if I found a cocktail that I thought was really interesting, that I liked the look of, or a technique, or a design, a look that I thought was great, like lime in tea coconut, you know, there's loads of, loads of recipes in here from what I'm looking at, and the photography looks great. The recipes look like the stuff I could recreate, um, because, you know, the glasses aren't, they look real, if that makes sense. So books, I love, even if it was once a fortnight. Right, so I've got plenty of time to kind of get the book and read the book before someone comes back on it. I'd love to like have regular kind of updates on books and reasons why to why you should get it. Maybe the author of the book, if 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 someone else had a show, well, it, my dream, I've got my show. Get in contact with the author of the book, get them to send a little video bit piece, you know, saying like this is what the inspiration was book of the book was, blah blah blah. That'd be quite cool. Right, speaking to authors on books and seeing from like why you should have this for reference. Now, I'm a massive fan of having books for reference. If if I if if I heard five years from now that um, oh you know uh, one of Ivy's uh, cocktails is like massive in my bar, selling tons of them, it's super amazing. I would want her original recipe, right? Now, if I don't know Ivy, I can't reach out to Ivy and ask her for her original recipe. But if I've got her first edition book and that's where the referee, uh, recipe was sourced from, I go, find it. Oh yeah, there it is, boom. And I use that. Um, I might cross-reference it, it, it with her or some someone working in her bar or someone that knows her to double check that like, they haven't moved on from it. Maybe it's been modernized in the last 10 years. But ultimately, like I like to have the, the actual books of the people rather than hearsay. And you know, you can't really Google things. Um, which led me to think, right, insights from people, right? Because I don't know everything, but there's people out there that know a shit ton of information and, and just insights in like, you know, what's hot in San Francisco right now. You know, what drinks are driving you crazy? It like, and it could be just a twist on a coffee tonic. But here, coffee tonics are just, there's still people that don't know about coffee tonic, right? So, um, books, insights from people, interviews with people. Um, Mitch's Minute, because Mitch is my boy and I'd like to hear from him every day. And then, um, 
recipes. I think if I if I just started bartending and I was going to watch a bunch of people chat shit on a show like this, the best show is the Encounter Show. Thank you, Zdenik. You're a legend. Yeah. So Educated Barfly is awesome, by the way. Um, I love Educated Barfly. I've been watching his show. His family via the show through sponsorship and ads. Oh wow. He can support his family through sponsorship and ads. Yeah, he's on like 160,000 followers or something like that. I th you know, the guy from Educated Barfly actually reached out to me, said he likes the show, and he's surprised there aren't more people following the show. It might help if I said stuff like like and subscribe, or if you didn't have to watch 45 minutes of a show to get one bit of information, because I talk shit for ages, and then there might be one gem. So my, my theory is, if there was a book review slash buy this book for this reason, right? Um, and a couple of people weighed in on the book, great. You could chop that piece out and just put that part up on a playlist on YouTube. So if you're not interested in watching the whole show, not being part of the live community, you just watch that bit. And then recipes. Now, I have a thought. I always found it very difficult and I've covered this several times on the show. I would go to Dale DeGroff's book, I'd go to the fine art of mixing drinks, and I'd go to like an online resource like Different. Now, I don't, I don't see Different's recipes as gospel because he, he's trying to make it approachable for the general consumer, and he's got, like he puts his own taste spin on it, right? And Different's a lovely guy, I've met him several times, and I'll tell you what, the more you hang out with Simon Different, the more you come to appreciate how hard he works. Uh, toward you know his website and, and building all his recipes online. Now, um, some of the other books, you, you're, again, you're back on people's taste. What I'm thinking is if I'm going to do recipes, I want to do them in such a way that they're not my personal recipes. They're an uh, amalgamation of a bunch of different recipes, right? Or people's opinions. So, if, so I've, I've got I've designed in my head about. 25 minutes ago when I was talking to Mitch and giving him the question, a kind of a five-star system for recipes, right? And the way I see it, and I'd love your feedback, um, her Pan Am Sour is great, okay? Trying the Pan Am Sour, boom, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be on that. The book, by the way, um, Austin, if you've ordered this and you haven't got it yet, um, the, the, like every, every element on the book, the quality of the book is phenomenal, like... The, the, it looks really well laid out. It looks like it's, it's kind of like, it looks like I'm, I'm, I haven't read it yet, but I'm pretty sure I'm going to chew through this in no time. Like it's got all your sugar cane drinks laid out and then and halfway through the book, it tells you where on which page numbered. It's going to be easy to chew through that thing. Right. So anyway, recipes. Now, in my mind, I'm thinking one star recipe right? For a one star recipe, it's just the spec. 30 of this, 30 of that, 30 of that, or one ounce, one ounce, one ounce, um, and shake and strain, right? The very simplest recipe you could ever imagine, but simplest spec. Now, for it, in my mind, to be a good recipe, it needs to have mils and ounces. And you, some people work in parts, but ultimately, if it's three quarters of an ounce, just replace the word ounce with part, and you've got your parts, okay? If you can't figure that out, quit. Quit the bar industry because there's a lot of numbers in the bar industry. And if you can't figure out how to swap ounces for parts in your head, there's a problem with you. Quit. Okay? Do something else. You're probably really creative. Do something else. Numbers are really important. You, you know, you're literally dealing with money. Um, now, r mills, ounces, and then step by step, right? My dream would be a step-by-step -step guide with left-handers doing that, right-handers doing that, but everyone's got different kind of mindsets. So that's your spec. That's a one-star recipe. A two-star recipe, in my opinion, would be that spec, let's say, with a photo attached to it, right? So that that's what it's meant to look like. Like when you see these books, um, a good book, you know, you've got rhubarb syrup, perennial mi millennial, perennial millennial, nice. And she's got... The, the recipe laid out, all the information that you need, probably got the story, I haven't even read it yet, and then she's got a nice picture of what the cocktail's meant to look like. So when she says crushed ice, or if she did, which she hasn't necessarily said crushed ice from what I can see, 
but somewhere in there it's going to say it. You can see that those to me look like a Hoshizaki cobbler, cobble ice, you know, like the little, little knobbly cobbly bits. So I now know what ice to put in there. I'm not going to put shaved ice in there. I'm going to put those little cobbly ones, right? And like cucumber garnish, you can't say cucumber garnish. You have to say that it's like peeled from length all the way down and then put it on the inside of the glass. Visually seeing what the drink is meant to be presented like really helps to guide you as to how the drink is meant to be presented. So one star is just a straight up spec. Two star would be visually presented. Three star, maybe costed. Exactly how many mils the drink ends up with, with, with like, this is the alcohol percentage. So for example, an old fashioned 29% alcohol by volume. And let's say ABV and proof, right? When you get to the three star recipe st stage, or let's not even do that. Let's say three star recipe, you need it to be confirmed. So you've got your recipe and your photo. That's what it's meant to look like. Confirmed by, let's say, three people that have been in the industry for a long time and are considered experts in their field. So like if someone said to you, I cross reference this recipe with Dale DeGroff, um, uh, Peter Dorelli and Ivy Mix, right? Even if it wasn't one of Ivy's recipes, if it's a classic, it's a sidecar, those three, you have no doubt that that recipe is going to be good because it's been cross-referenced by a couple of different industry heavyweights. Um, they've been around for a long time. They understand what a classic recipe is. They know what a Manhattan margarita is meant to look like. So that could be your three star. And then as you scale up, a full video in HD at a certain standard quality with, with clear instruction showing you how to make it in the most efficient manner of the time. Right? So step one, this. Step two, that. And it's broken down in a video with audio so that people that don't learn from reading, the picture isn't enough, they want to see it, um, might, that they don't care about references, that video will help them, right? And the video as well, if it's a drink like a Cafe Brulot, Cafe Brulot has a lot to do with the process, you know? Like if it's a drink where something needs to be poured, something needs to be layered, watching how to layer it, if you're a brand new bartender, it will help. That's your four star. Now, five star, let's assume five star has the person who literally invented the drink. Sam Ross has said, that is a good penicillin and I approve this video, right? Ultimately, if Sam was doing the video. Um, or a five star recipe has now been costed out. Uh, you, you get a spreadsheet, kind of copy and paste for it. And you've got the alcohol percentage worked out and the calories kind of estimated. That would be like legit. If you had all those things every single time someone put a recipe out, that'd be badass. So for me, if I knew I was doing one show a week and I just had to do that for one classic recipe and I could, you know, maybe do five recipes at a time, call, call Jason, call this person, call that person, get them to, to say, yep, yeah, that's, that's, those spec are great guys. Like, boom, boom, done. Put their names against it. Away we go. Right? Some five star recipes. So that I'd like to see on the show. I would like to see, if someone else did that, I would like to see that. In fact, the guys, like, like uh, Gabby mentioned, um, the, where is it? Hold on. Educated Barfly. Educated Barfly recipes are legit, right? I've, I've watched those. I've put them on in the background when I'm setting up the cabin sometimes or when I'm packing it down, and it's super cool. So I've watched his show. Um, exactly the same kind of format, but obviously, you know, I'm not, I'm not saying that I'm going to do it better, but I'm going to really enjoy doing it um, and have a different take on it. So um, I certainly won't do it better, actually. I've seen he puts a lot of thought into things. I'm just kind of like pulling it together and throwing it out there. But different take. Also, I might cover some recipes he hasn't covered. I might have to look into what recipes he's covered. Shit, we should probably talk. I'm going to talk to him. Right, that's my thoughts. Now, I asked Mitch about what he thinks, and this is Mitch's take, Mitch's minute on how he pulls his recipes together. Ah, um, combination for process for confirming specs. If it's a classic, I'm going to use a combination of imbibe, fine art of mixing drinks, the Savoy, um, vintage spirits and forgotten cocktails. What else do I use in there? Yeah, those, a combination of like, like the original milk and honey spec sheet, which I acquired, um, 
I've got a couple of other resources in there. And then if it's a modern drink, I generally try to go straight to the source or to um, the source of the of the bar or if I can get to the bartender. If I don't know the person personally, then I, I can generally know somebody that knows them. And then I'll gather my information on like, you know, three or four different variations of it. Obviously eliminate ingredients that seem to be inconsistent with the the overall recipe. And then I'll try it three or four times until I get to what I believe is best practice recipe. Breakfast beers because quarantine and I got laid off again. All right, so we're totally doing it. I'm totally, I'm, I'm also, Diogo, thank you for saying that the show is at a professional level. I'm trying my best. And this is, I, I kind of really want to keep doing the show. Um, I, I want to kind of, I, I, I'm, I'm, we're selling the house. So basically, I have to move the cabin. And that is going to be a big job. There is a lot of stuff in here. And, and you, you can't see from here. But all the whole side down the wall is like oak casks. Like I've pulled the oak casks out and I've been, I've been trying to make a video for a friend of mine. Um, if you're watching a friend of mine who I might be making a video for based around wood. Yeah, I've been trying. Um, and I've got all these different casks and I've got them seasoned different things. And I forgot that I had um, new, like young rum in a five liter cask. Like, Literally four and a half liters of rum in there for like a year and a half. Um, and it just tastes like wood now. But, you know, it's rum season cask now. So I've got all that stuff. And like when I when I build the cabin Mark II, I want to make it bigger and I want to have a more professional studio environment. And that's the reason why I'm going to stop calling it cabin fever. I'm going to start working on segments for the show. So if as a community you have any suggestions, I'm definitely doing the book club because I've had it suggested to me a couple of times and I have just got too many books to, to not revisit them. If, if, if book club was an excuse to over the course of two weeks to go back through a book and it could be the flavor thesaurus, it could be, you know, um, rum revolution, gin palace, like looking at all the books, there's, there's plenty of reason for me to look back over books. Um, and some of the some of the books are obscure ones. So and they might I might have different versions like McGee on food and cooking. I haven't looked at that for a really long time. So there's lots of stuff I can do with that. Um, so book clubs definitely in. And as far as recipes, let me know um, if you think it's a stupid idea to, to do too much where I'm costing it up and doing the event spec and everything like that for a recipe, then so be it. But I'd love to see as as a recipe comes out. There's, you know, a background. Uh, I created a group on Facebook, but I kind of want to move away from Facebook. Um, there's a background there where every time I'm adding a recipe, it goes onto a spec sheet. And every time the spec sheet gets bigger, you can just download the PDF and you've got the spec sheet. So if you went to open a new bar and you'd been watching the show and you kind of agreed with the recipes on the show, you could just download that spec sheet and away you go. Right. So um, I'm saying this. I'm making a whole freaking episode about it because ultimately I my I enjoy the show more when I when I'm doing it with you guys. Like for example, Diogo, that sherry episode. The sherry episode, I mean I've I've tasted all those sherries before. I've been to the bodega like or whatever you call it. Is it a bodega? Is it a winery? I I've been there, right? I tasted all the but because you asked me to do a sherry episode, I went back through them. And I got the PowerPoint presentation sent to me and like, it's epic, you know, revisiting them all, tasting them all again, super awesome. So, you know, thank you for that. Um, it was really good for me and, and working in a community environment like this, it, it, I wanted, as Gabby said, I wanted, and the reason you can see this much of the bar and it's not like, look at this, it's not a crop. If I move to this one, right? Um, I can crop in at any point to allow like less of the screen and and I'm not gonna lie I've been told by people that know what they're talking about that I should be cropping into about here because today people look at their they watch things that way not that way so there's less noise around here but you know what 
I wanted you to feel like you're sitting at the bar. In fact, um, I'm going to make one of the last, one of the new episodes one, before I move cabin. I'm going to put a virtual reality camera that I've got, a 360 camera there, and um, have it so that you can sit in the cabin, put goggles on, and be in the cabin for the very, very final episode that's shot in this cabin. And then do the same for the first episode that's shot in the new uh, studio. So you could see the difference as a guest in the studio of being in this one and being in the new one, right? I just, I just hope people are like, uh, don't turn around and be like, I like your old stuff better than your new stuff, you know, because that would be that would be a shame if I spend hundreds of thousands. Literally, it looks like it's going to cost hundreds of thousands of pounds to make a studio happen, <laughs> like the kind of one that I want, where guests can come in, get a drink, I make them a drink, chat to them, they're on the show, then they go and sit down, and then we bring in the like guest guest, like a like a like a late night show, right? So. On the, on the name of the episode, right, I put the Ottawa cocktail. And uh, I mean, there is no such thing as an Ottawa cocktail, um, which I, I had to Google. I'm not going to lie. I had to Google, is there an Ottawa cocktail? Um, and there wasn't. And I'm, I've now realized that I set up everything. Oh, there it is. I set everything up, but I didn't know where I put my mixing glass. So I got my mixing glass, got my ice. Now, um, if, if for, for Diogo, Probably the, the, the guy that's been with me right from the beginning. Mate, I cannot wait to meet you in real life. Um, uh, it's, I can't say, I can't, I can't express enough how uh, good it is to have uh, people support me on this. Um, you know, keeping myself busy. Right. So you might remember the Rum Toronto. Mitch was drinking a Rum Toronto, right? And Mitch said to me, the Rum Toronto is basically like, I was like, Toronto? Rum Toronto? What's that? He's like, oh, it's, you know, basically like a, 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 a Manhattan, but with Fernet Branca. And I was like, oh, okay. And, instead of bitters. And I was like, oh, okay. So I made, right, rum, sweet vermouth, Fernet Branca, and, he, and you know, and, sh and, 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 and uh, instead of bitters. And he said there was sugar syrup in it. He said, use only about five mils of sugar syrup. So I put five mils of sugar. So now I've got rum, sweet vermouth, sugar, and, and uh, fernet branca. And it tasted amazing. Turns out, Mitch in LA was not putting sweet vermouth in his ones. So we're drinking two completely different drinks. Um, and I didn't know that. Um, cut to... The, the rum Toronto episode, like I did a Toronto episode, um, but I, by this stage, I now knew that there was no, um, there was no vermouth in a Toronto, um, but it tastes so good. Um, and what, what can you do, right? So, so it, it can't, it can't be a Toronto, right? Because it's not a Toronto and it's not even a twist on a Toronto. It's so far removed from a twist on a Toronto we have to give it a new name, right? And I, I, I'm, I'm using Canadian whiskey here, right? In, in homage to the Toronto. And, I'm, uh, and this particular Canadian whiskey has been finished in both wine casks and Hungarian oak casks. And the wine casks come from Mission Hill in um, Canada. So they're Canadian wine casks. I've never been, I don't know what they taste like, but I like the idea that Toronto, Canada, Ottawa, capital Canada, and just a name that was available, right? And I like Manhattan's, and Manhattan is a, is a place, so place name. Um, and I know this tastes great. Like, it actually tastes fucking phenomenal. So, I just thought I'll just make it, and then, then the recipe's my recipe now, because it's my mistake. Uh, like, albeit a happy accident, that's my mistake that I made, trying to recreate what Mitch was drinking. Um, I made the wrong thing, but it's tasty. Um, and that, that was another reason I kept thinking about um, recipes and the importance of like having one central source. Um, I don't, I'm not going to say that I would like to become um, the one central source that people use. I think that would be a lot of pressure that I wouldn't really be up for. Um, but, you know what, I'm going to use this guy. 
ultimately, I think it'd be really cool um, for me to go through that process and for anyone that decides they want to tune into the show to follow me going through that process, um, join me going through that process, and then we can all do it together and we can create a nice little library of drinks. Um, and you know what? If it, if it means that you know so some of you guys have a little bit of spare time and you're joining me in, in doing some of the research and some of the little bits and pieces, or you're suggesting, hey man, you know what we've forgotten? We forgot to do a Harvard. Throw a Harvard in there. You, we need to like kind of you know find out the history of it, lo- learn the spec, get a few people to bring it in. What well, like do you just keep it the same as Manhattan but put in cognac, right? Let's do that research. I'm up for it. And um, I do want to open a bar someday. I know it's going to take a little while before I get there. Um, so in the meantime, I'm not going to put cherry in there. It'll just get like sticky, and I can't find where they are. Um, in the meantime. I'm going to continue to make the show. I'm going to go back to calling it the Dean Callan Show. No more cabin fever. Um, let's be positive. And uh, if you have any suggestions of, of, you know, kind of like Mitch's minute, if you had a two minute, three minute, one minute segment, because for me, having a structure of segments, the show opens. There's a bit of a chat about what we're going to do today. A, a back and forth with someone live would be great each time. And then we move from that. Two, pre-recorded segment, Mitch's Minute. You know, back to me, pre-recorded segment maybe. And away we go. Um, So, Hadrian, Joe, and uh, uh, Dominic, expect to see them, not this Friday coming, but the Friday after. Um, Next Wednesday, please try to put this in your diary, right? This time, one week from now, on the 15th of July, and it's sticking to this time, I'm going to have none other than Alexander Gabriel, So if you don't know who Alexander Gabriel is, he is the guy that makes, oh God, this is going to be difficult. Well, he makes this and he makes that and 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 this. So just in my cabin alone, I've got a lot of his stuff. And if you haven't been following the news, they're changing the name of plantation in solidarity with the Black Lives Matters movement, and the you know uh, the realization that the, the name has negative connotations for some people. Um, and I want to find. I want to have to ask the question: What are you changing the name to? Um, and and just g- getting an insight into the process and the story and all the different things that he's got going on is going to be amazing. So tune into that. Um, and yeah, you know. Have a nice weekend. Hopefully this Friday as well, I'm going to try to get uh, the Global Brand Ambassador for Crystal Head on the phone. But it might be difficult because I'm going to change the the time of Friday's episode to 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Right? So my day will finish at 2 o'clock in the afternoon uh, working. And then I'm going to do the show at 2 o'clock, 2 p.m. our time. So it's four hours earlier than normal. And then when the show is finished, a party for the weekend. That's me done. Um, that's the plan. Because the show, you know, at 6 p.m., people are going to work. They've got jobs. Pubs are open again. So look forward to seeing you. It's been a pleasure. And uh, I always thought Toronto was a Brooklyn with Fernet instead of Pecan. Yeah, that's what I thought. But I'm, I, I looked up the recipe and I'm not seeing any, like, I don't know. We'll have to. This is why we need to do this process. If we had a couple of weeks, like, and you knew and in advance, right? So, uh, next two weeks from now, uh, we're doing this this cocktail, and you start on a group on the chat, right? Start working it out. One once we've done the work all together as a group, then we've got a recipe, and as a group, as a group, right? That's that's our spec. And, and we've done the work. We've all agreed on it. We like it. Like, that's a good spec. And yes, different places need different specs. But ultimately, if it's a classic and you've got an agreed on spec from 100 people, then you, you know you, at least you feel confident on that spec. And, and there used to be a lot more uh, people. I remember hospitality nights. Like every Monday was a hospitality night. Every single week when I first started bartending. What the fuck happened to hospitality nights? 
the first time I heard someone say that you can't have a hospitality night because exclusive to hospitality only means that other people are missing out. Cool, but now there's no night. No one, there's no hospitality night on a Monday night. Like, so what, those other people aren't having the fun, right? So no one's having the fun. That's terrible. We should go back to hospitality nights. People used to hang out, have a few drinks and chat about their spec and like figure it out amongst them. It doesn't happen anymore. Kind of become more insular. Let's make it happen again. Anyway, I'm going to push the end of it button. I mean the sweet vermouth part. Look, I'm going to read the comments after. It's too hard to read. I have to look that way. And actually, I'll tell you what, I've, I've, I've figured out. I, I wanted to move this screen over here because two reasons. Like one, I don't like the idea that I have to look like that because look at the size of my nose. I started getting self-conscious about it. And then two, if I actually need to type, see that? Look at this. See the light on my, on my lower back fatty bit? I gotta start working out, right? That's the start. The new show is gonna have an element of me getting fit in it. That's, that's my plan. So that, so that I can have a show, like I can feel good about myself and be more confident. I think people, people, that's what people need. People need a more confident Dean in the world, right? Wouldn't that be nice? All right, I'm signing out. Oh, also, I'm gonna do a lot more of this. I, I started making them, like, right, right? Uh-oh. Yeah, that didn't work so well. So I've, I've got subfolders that I've just created. But I've now realized uh, when I go into the subfolder, I can't get out straight away. I have to press two buttons. I'm going to have to fix that. Um, yeah, happy Wednesday. I'll see you Friday four hours earlier, which I've just realized I now have to change this outro. Damn, so much work. This show is so much work.